Okay, so we had bok bok shroom, triple protein gumbo, right. and cauliflower coconut yes. curry. Okay. Ooh, it smells really Doesn't good. Doesn't it smell good? It so good. So uh -huh. lots of spices, lots of interesting flavorings. And when I can bite wow. into some protein, that's a wow. The moment has finally come. It's time to crown the winner of my first ever Spruce Up Your Soup Challenge. I put out the call and so many of you answered with incredibly healthy, delicious, and original recipes of your own using my bone broth. My team and I love seeing how you incorporated my bone broth into so many wonderful recipes. In fact, we spent days milling through all of your submissions from all over the country and picked our three finalists based on nutritional value, originality, and the use of Dr. Kellyanne's bone broth. But now only one factor remains, taste. I knew I couldn't taste these soups alone, so I had to call for help from a friend of mine who might look a little familiar to you, James Beard, award-winning chef, New York Times best-selling author, and my friend, Rocco Despirito. Okay, guys, here's your special treat. Hello, Rocco, come on in. Great to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you, too. Well, nice today, to be here. Great yeah, set. Yeah, it's a great set. And today we're talking about soups, because I know you love soups, Love too. soups. Who doesn't love soups? Who doesn't like soups? And what I want to know from you, because you've been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. New York Times bestselling author, what does it take to have a really, to create a really beautiful soup. So a couple things, for soups to be delicious, they need to have real depth of flavor, which takes a lot of time, a lot of mm. love and a lot of time. You know, your grandmother's soup is always the best soup you ever had. They have the time, they had, they could supervise mm -hmm. the pot on the stove for a couple of days, and if you can duplicate that feeling with your product, I'm really curious to see. I'm mm. a tough judge, by the way. You I are, and that's, that's why I have you, because you know what I want? I want honesty. I'm Italian, no you're problem. Italian. Okay. So Rocco and I, we're gonna taste three final soups and determine the winner who's gonna receive an all expense paid trip to New York City to come cook with me in my kitchen. All expense paid trip to New York City? Yeah. I'd like one of those for yeah, a week. me too. I just wanna stay at home and get an all expense paid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, staycation yeah, I think exactly. they call it, right? Yeah. So, okay, I can't wait any longer. It's time to get to some soup tasting. All right, we're gonna get what right to say? it, okay. The first one up today, Rocco, is yes. called Bok Bok Shroom. And this Good was submitted name. to us from Carolyn from Cleveland, Ohio. That's a good name. It's a good, it's a good we name. We have to give them some points for a good name. Bok Bok yeah. Shroom. I can see that on a packet. Yeah, here's what you're gonna love, is that it's got right on top some halibut. Oh, and is that what that is? Okay, This cool. is halibut yeah. and 25 grams of protein in halibut. Oh, that's so, huge, yeah. So you're getting a lot of protein in, in just one serving of soup, and it's also a great source of selenium. Oh, selenium, hard to find selenium out in the streets. So we love this, and also mushrooms are in there, of course, the name, and bok choy. And I know you use a lot of those in your cooking, I would imagine. Definitely a big fan of all the leafy green vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables, mushrooms, very important part of any nutritious diet, of course. I love mushrooms because they actually are one of the few foods that provides you with vitamin D. All right, all right let's do it. She's never gonna, she's not gonna let me eat. I'm telling you, I came here to, to no, feed you. No, this looks I great. Came, you're, you're here to, to, to get well fed, okay. Ooh, it smells really so good. Doesn't it smell it good? So good. So uh -huh. lots of spices, lots of interesting flavorings. Mm. And when I can bite wow. into some protein, that's a wow. That is uh, extremely delicious. Mm -hmm. Extremely delicious. And don't you just love like mm. when something is like nutrient dense like oh this? Oh my goodness! It's like nutrient dense, so you're not getting all the calories. You're getting all the nutrition. Yes. And that's the nutritional win. You know, yeah. there are a couple of foods that I make that I love and that uh, you know, my family used to make that I could I say you could live on. Mm -hmm. And this is something you'd live on. You could eat this breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'd probably end up losing weight. You you'd would. probably be the healthiest you've ever been. Mm -hmm. And it's so delicious. So what's really interesting mm. is that first of all, you have the stickiness that any um, protein concentrated soup would have. It feels like bone broth. It tastes like bone broth and you, you feel that texture on your lips, which is nice. I like that. I think if you're having a, a deep rich soup, and it doesn't stick a little bit. Yes. It doesn't feel like there's enough protein and collagen in it. And yes. you want that dissolved collagen because that's that stuff really good for you. And that's yeah. from a chef, and I will tell you from a nutritional standpoint how I feel about this. I feel like I'm getting all good nutrition mm. and flavor as, as well. And for sure. this, she knocked it out of the park, wouldn't you say? I'm gonna eat the whole thing. You're gonna eat the whole yeah. thing. Okay, then I'm that gives me an excuse. <laughs> I'm going to. Mm. But do, you gotta save room because we have two more. We've got two more. Do I look like I can not eat another meal? Are you kidding? <laughs> Uh, or myself. How about we put a fried egg on top? 
Wouldn't that be good? Okay, the first one was amazing. First one was, a, you know, 8.5, 8.9 out of 10. Okay, I love yeah. that. So you're number Professional five. TV I, chef judge. I think. <laughs> and I think this one is going to surprise you. And this one is triple protein gumbo. And this comes from Susan, who's mm -hmm. from Texas. And the base of this is one of my all-time favorites, which is rosemary thyme and home style. Mm. They're both chicken broths, and this has shrimp, sausage, and rotisserie chicken. And it's actually chicken sausage. So you're getting like a triple whammy. You're not even waiting. I'm not no, going to wait. You're not no, going to wait. You have to, you have okay. to eat it while it's hot. It's, it looks so good. It's so good. This has 50 grams of protein. Wow, that's a lot. 50 grams. So that's almost your whole daily dose yeah, in just one for bowl. Sure. All right, we're okay. trying this, right? Cheers. Okay. See, this to me. Wow. I'm allowed to say wow, right? Wow. Okay, you're with me on this? Yeah, that's a wow. Okay, this is a wow. Yeah. Lots of flavor, big explosion of flavor. Mm. Incredible aromatics happening in the sinuses in the back of our faces. Okay, I love that he just said that. Because I love mm. food that has double duty. And this is like a double down, double duty soup because I feel it like loosening everything up and nourishing me. Like this to mm. me is hearty. I can't think of a better word for this. Mm. And you know what she used to, to thicken this? She used something called arrowroot. Are you familiar arrowroot, with sure. that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you love that? Yeah, arrowroot is a plant. Um, when you powder the root, it, it becomes a um, basically a modified starch that you can use to thicken. And I am a big fan of it, unlike some other modified starches that are not great for you. Mm -hmm. Arrowroot is absolutely good for <clears> you. I don't know that it needs thickening. It's got the broth and the rice. Mm. So in my professional opinion, this chef is experienced. They understand how flavor and texture work with each other. They've made gumbo millions of times. This is not something they just made for you. They understand the interplay between the spices and the rice and the broth and the shrimp and the sausage. Mm. Very complicated mix of flavors that they pulled off here. It is cooked to perfection. Everything is just so. So on flavor, it's going to be a 9 out of 10, maybe a 9.2. Mm -hmm. On uh, texture and presentation, mm. easily a 9. Mm. Uh, overall, 9.2 out of 10. He's a tough judge, because I'm like, you think I, this should be a 10 out of I got 10, 10 flags yeah. coming, off, coming yeah. out all over the place. Well, no one gets but. a 10, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like me with nutrition, yeah. same thing. Our next soup is called cauliflower coconut curry. Oh, yum. Yum, yum. and this comes from Anne Marie. Mm -hmm. She's from Minnesota. And Ooh. the base of this is my French onion bone broth. Oh, what a smart move. Yep, French onion, and she took that and she mixed it with coconut milk and mm -hmm. water. So when I think of that, I think, okay, coconut milk in there. You've Ooh. got the soup. Let's just dig in because it smells is so good. Always so such a ah, smart move. Mm -mm. And she added a lot of onions in here, and I'm a big fan of onions mm. because of that prebiotic. Oh, fiber. this is gonna be so tough now. It's so good. Oh my god. Okay. Curry, cauliflower, and anything creamy, and, and whatever she did to make it creamy was very smart. Because mm. curry needs a thick texture for the like flavor dispersion to happen mm. properly. Is that how? Is that how this? The is flavor like? release is a very important part of how you taste things. So, thickening the soup made a lot of sense. She also added some metabolism boosting ingredients that I love, like jalapenos mm. and some rich mushrooms, which is good. And we talked about the fact that these are also great for vitamin D, to include some vitamin D, which everyone needs so much. Yes. And also spices. You and I talked about spices. She's got turmeric in here, which is, I'm a big fan of. And so Anne Marie, who created this uh, recipe, she almost didn't make the cut because the whole thing, one of the parameters was making sure that this was really nutritious. Yeah, she's and, underselling it. This and, is really good. <laughs> And she, she needs did. to sell harder, Anne Marie, wherever you are. <laughs> Anne Marie, where the heck are you? Get over here. So one of the things that she did do was she added a little bit of sugar. Mm. And the reason why I had to let this pass is because I feel like she's using so many other good ingredients, including all of the spices and everything that she yeah. uses. It kind of counterbalances yeah. the effect that a little bit of sugar is going to have in here. Would For sure. I, I, I completely agree. And curry without a tiny bit of sweetness is very difficult to pull off in ah. terms of just pure chefy flavor mm. talking here. Very hard to pull that off with a, without a little bit of sweetness. I would say in the future, think about monk fruit, maybe stevia, oh, okay. coconut nectar. Right? Monk fruit. Okay, <laughs> Are monk we finally fruit. there where we can talk about monk fruit? Mon How do you not um, overcook cauliflower rice? So a couple things with cauliflower rice. Um, I do think it's important to grate the cauliflower when it's raw. Don't cook it, then grate it, and I've seen people do that. If you're buying it frozen, then you should know it's already cooked. You don't really need to cook it. Just throw it into the soup while the soup is boiling, and that'll mm -hmm. be it. Now, the good thing about cauliflower is that the more you cook it, the kind of better it tastes. 
It absorbs flavors more. The, mm. That weird gassy, you know, texture and flavor disappears, which is great. Um, so I don't mind that it's a little soft and a little bit overcooked. Mm, nice. It's never going to be the texture of you know, uh, un, you know, like an Uncle Ben's long well, long no. grain rice. You know. But I think the advantages of using cauliflower far exceed Huge, yeah. using using rice in terms of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, these were all delicious, which is Very why good. it's almost impossible to decide which soup will take the top truly, prize. Truly, truly. This is really delicious. Got a lot going on in terms of flavor. So. Yeah. What I like about this soup <laughs> is it shows you how how little effort it takes to make something delicious mm. using a compound flavor that's already in a package like your French onion soup, mixing it with a few simple ingredients. It probably took 20 minutes on the stove and mm -hmm. you have a delicious, very healthy soup. Mm. This is yeah. going to be like 8.7 on flavor. Okay, I'm, I'm good yeah. with that. 8.7. You're good? 7. Okay. All right. I think 8.7. Okay, so we had bok bok shroom, triple protein gumbo, right. and cauliflower coconut yes. curry. All three names I thought were very descriptive. Yes, good names, very soup. good names, very memorable. Right, very memorable, but I felt like it really described what was going mm -hmm. on in the soups. So let's like just so like, for example, bok bok shroom, yeah, chicken base, mm -hmm. bok choy, and mushrooms, main ingredients. Mm -hmm. Very clever use of uh, words. Also, something I could see on a on a supermarket shelf. For sure, you want to expand your line. Mm, you know, well, wink, wink. <laughs> you never know what's under the hood here. And truly delicious. I mean, it was a very well put together soup. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of thought was put into the culinary aspect of it. They didn't sort of take the easy way out. Just use your base and go. Oh, okay, my work is done here. So I have like go to things on a yeah. menu that I order when I go out. Um, and halibut is definitely mm -hmm. always one of them. Yeah, halibut's basically a local fish. You know, it's either East Coast or West Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to farm raise halibut, so they're not farm raised. When they're in season, which is right now, by the way, uh, they're delicious. There's really nothing better. Just don't overcook it. Don't, don't overcook, overcook it. it. I always get asked, how do I make sure my you know fish and meat comes out? You know, moist and tender and ju juicy. I said, just don't overcook it. Don't overcook that's it. A, yeah. That's the key. It's the key yeah. in soups in general, I guess. Yeah. So that's that. And then we've got the triple protein gumbo. Triple protein gumbo, the crowd pleaser. The okay. parade. It was like a parade of flavor. Oh uh, yeah. Marching, marching through our palate, right? <laughs> It yes. had rotisserie chicken, which is so smart. That's a shortcut food mm -hmm. that you can buy in the supermarket. That's mm -hmm. full of protein, obviously. Uh, the shrimp. Shrimp, of course. No brainer. A no brainer. And you know, I love that they use chicken sausage. Yes. Not regular yes. sausage. Yes. They use chicken yeah. sausage. It and look had, at all these ingredients. Look at oh, how much work I went mean, into this. It, it was a Ghee, lot. Ghee, arrowroot. And, and then they're I, reading our books. They're reading our books. <laughs> Thank God, they're reading our books. And then the rosemary thyme, that that has to be, I, I think like you can put rosemary thyme in almost any dish mm -hmm. that you have, and it just brings out this harvesty good, kind yes. of feel good. Yes. Uh, so I love that they use that. So you've got all this protein, right? It's a harvest of protein. You've got the rosemary thyme as the base, and then you've got all of these other things, these prebiotic foods, these probiotic foods, you've mm -hmm. got all of the things that the hot and spicy that mm -hmm. help boost the metabolism. Garlic, Himalayan Go salt, cayenne I mean, pepper. I mean, it just goes on and on yeah. and on. So this is so bursting with effort and mm -hmm. flavor yeah. that for me, this is a strong contender. Yeah. Strong Definitely a strong contender. contender, and I feel like they didn't give up on the dish. So gumbo is complicated; it requires a roux. There's a hundred ingredients. Um, they didn't say, you know, we're just going to simplify it for the TV audience. They didn't. They made a roux, but they used arrowroot and ghee instead of butter and flour. So really, I mean, there's so many benefits oh, to this yeah. dish, uh, and I love this. And actually, the history behind this is that she was in Louisiana, and she wanted to create a healthy gumbo soup. Oh, and okay. I think she did Got just it. that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and then so cauliflower coconut curry soup. So many of my favorite flavors. I love cauliflower, coconut, and curry together. Mm. I think it's probably one of the greatest three ingredients you can put together in any dish. In any dish. And there's so many health benefits to the, the curry. People love curry. Uh, and then it's got... Uh, guys, extra turmeric, extra crushed red pepper. I think they used your um, got, French onion soup Yeah, broth. I love the fact that you're getting this French onion, but you're getting this coconut curry. And whenever I think about this, this is, this is a very hydrating soup. Mm. It's one of the things I like about this. And it's got simplicity to it. It does have simplicity to it, but it also has a lot of flavor. Definitely feels like something anyone can make yes. with a short amount of time. Yes. Yeah. As you call it, a shortcut. Yeah, it's a lot of shortcut the, foods, and I feel like 20 minutes on the stove and you're done. You have a meal, you have a soup, and a healthy, uh, you know, healthy dish that you can feed your entire family, and probably not costing very much. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about, is there anything right. you don't like? Because, you know, when you go on Amazon and you're looking for reviews, yeah. you always want the ones that are, eh. So is there anything here that you'd say is it, eh? No, there's definitely no, uh, like you say, red flags or any... 
nothing like that. Okay. There, some people worked a little harder than other people. <laughs> Maybe that one did a little this more guy, work. Triple and, protein gumbo. Yeah, taking a gumbo, which is probably one of the greatest things ever put in a pan, and making that healthy and delicious. No small feat, right? No small feat. Okay, I think we definitely have a winner. Drum roll, please. And the winner of the Spruce Up Your Soup Challenge is Susan Meinholz of Texas with her triple protein gumbo. They say everything is bigger in Texas and Susan's recipe proved that this includes flavor for sure. I just love how much protein Susan packed into her soup. She should have called it an octuple gumbo. The shrimp, the chicken, the sausage, the okra, and of course my bone broth. It was truly a home run. Congratulations, Susan. I can't wait to welcome you into my kitchen.